Welcome to Science Unscripted. I'm Robin Donovan, Signs of the Times Editor-in-Chief, and with me today is... Joe Gibson with Ramsey Sign Company out of Portland, Oregon. Yeah, so Joe, you and I are neighbors. We are. At least in the scope of the podcast. I don't think I've talked to anyone in Oregon yet, so we're fairly close. We're both in Portland, and your company is actually responsible for Portland's most famous sign, right? The stag sign. It is. The iconic Portland... Oregon sign, originally built in 1947. So clearly you have not been with your company since 1947. So tell us a little bit about your history. And because I know you've been working with some of your folks for a really long time. I came to work for Ramsey Signs in 1978. And uh, at that time, it was 78 years old. And I believe we're 108 years old as of this year. So we've we've done a lot of pretty iconic Portland skyline projects over the year. Yeah, and part of being successful for such a long time is is not only doing great work, but also having great people. And I know that you do a lot with giving back to the community. I think you and I actually met for the first time on a sign manufacturing day shop tour that I attended. Talk to me about building a pipeline of satisfied, curious people in the sign industry? Well, we we like to try to portray a very positive vibe for the sign industry. It's so little is known about the sign industry to the majority of the public. Um, For instance, this weekend we were the pace car for the nighttime starlight parade and it just it, we like to create a buzz in the community about our company and we do participate in manufacturing day every year and we also do some other fun things where i think there's over the years there's been some teachers that just love to come here and check out what we're doing and we have given tours to senior homes even to first grade second and third graders And I I had met someone that was hired recently out in the shop, and she had gone through one of the second grade tours. And now she's out of high school and she's working here, and it's it's so cool to see things like that. Yeah, so what is that, like ten at least 10 years later that she she must have remembered, right? Yeah, I think it was actually about 15. She she was having a deja vu, and she was like, I swear I've been here before. And she had went home that night and told her mom that she was, having deja vu and she remembered all of a sudden that she had gone through the tour when she was in second grade so that was kind of fun so you planted a seed and that's so cool it is it's pretty exciting and she's just such a great person she just loves what we do we we try to really exemplify creative designs to our customers and and that mimics in the reaction to the employees everybody wants to work on cool stuff it's almost like every sign is a a little miniature Rembrandt and our employees are so passionate to be part of that. At the end of the day, there's such a self accomplishment of what they've done. It's pretty exciting. I feel like in the social media age, a sign is a very tangible, photographable object that you can say, hey, I did this at work, you know, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, it really is. And we've had to have a couple of chats because it'll be just normal business as usual, and then all of a sudden it'll get quiet. We'll look out the window, and then all the the shop's black like it's time to go home. (laughs) Well, somebody's just plugged the sign in for the first time, and everybody's taking pictures of it, and we have certain customers that don't allow photographs on social media, so we have to kind of police that a little bit. But I would rather police it than no one want to take a picture of their own work. And so you told me that you had some really interesting cross-training types of things that you do to help retain employees. Because one of the things you've been really successful with is having a lot of installers and having a lot of employees who stay not only year over year, but decade over decade. And sure, part of that is attributable to the longevity of the company, but not all of it. So how are you attracting and retaining so much talent? Some might say a disproportionate amount of talent. (laughs) So what's your secret, Joe? Well, one of our secrets is truly investing in our employees. We were one of the first people to have all of our installers certified with the crane certification 
I think it was eight years ago we did that before it was even a requirement. And training back when Neon Transformers became 2161 rated, we were one of the first companies in the country to use those. We wanted to be leaders in the technology in our field. And there's a lot of gratification that goes into our installers being having the confidence level they have. The, the installers in Oregon go through a training like no other. Absolutely no other. I think there's only two other states that have the rigorous training that our installers go through, and it it really educates them to a level. We have certain customers that want our installers because they've been trained Mm -hmm. to a level that a lot of other companies haven't been able to get to. And are you also cross-training? We actually do. We rotate our shop department every six months, and we've also, with the assistance of ISA, started using the digital badges as a way to increase your wages for review. You have to have X amount of digital badges to promote yourself to the next level. And that's continuing education? That's correct. And and, and it just, it's interesting because these digital badges within our company have created a competition where I've heard at lunchtime, how many digital badges do you have? Well, I got six. Well, I got them all this weekend. So we're we're training these guys to learn, and I I think the ultimate goal for the sign industry would be to have every state take these digital badges and use them as a tool to increase the knowledge of the industry. There's, there's, it's, it's very disheartening to sit down and give someone a review and think that all they want is a raise. Well, what did they learn? What, how are we promoting our industry? If we can't invest in our people, we'll never have enough for the next generation of sign fabricators. And that's, we are really working on building the next generation of fabricators and installers. So then what about your culture do you think helps retain these folks? Because, of course, a lot of sign companies are concerned that if they make major investments in their people that they are going to grow a competitor or, you know, that they're going to pay all this money and then the person's just going to go work for another company. So how do you keep them after you make this investment? Well, there's only one way to that I've found to keep good people is that's to take care of them. Whether it's monetary, equipment, making them better than the next person, you have to take care of your people. So how do you do that? Well, you, it's like you might have the newest truck or the the fanciest new 3D router or the best spray booth. You have to give these people the best tools there are in the industry to excite them to want to learn. Mm -hmm. And And I I think think to make them feel like they're elite, right? That they, you know, that you're the best person with the best training working on the best. Absolutely. And trust me, we have a long way to go. I, I would love to get a new spray booth and some other things. And those are all things that we have targeted to do. And as long as your employees see that, you're trying and making an effort, they realize that, and it goes a long way. One, I mean, silly little things like uh, employee of the month, employee of the year, hot dogs, hamburgers on, on a regular basis, just the, the little things mm-hmm. day to day. really do matter. It, it, at the end of the day, money's not everything. I know it's shocking, but... <laughs> no, they say that, though. It's about growth potential and capacity. It's about learning new things. It's about relationships and company culture. And it's about money. But no one wants to work in a toxic place just for good money. People leave those jobs all the time. I can I can interview one of the most gifted, talented person in the industry. And if I don't feel that they would fit with our core... There's really no sense bringing him in because that's something about our culture that I do feel passionate about, that we're a large family here. We've grown from 2010, we had 40 people, to 2019, we have almost 150 now. So 100 people in nine years, it's just been a really, we've been very blessed with so many amazing talented people in this industry it's just we have some of the best in the business and we're very 
fortunate that they're right here in Portland. And I think part of that's the outcome of your investment. And speaking of investments, Joe, the podcast is so short that I'm afraid we're out of time. But thank you for spending some time with us today. And hopefully other sign makers will follow your example and take some of these suggestions for growing the next generation of sign makers and industry leaders. So thank you so much. Thank you. 